Welcome to Crashing with Friends podcast, episode 87. My name is Kyle Hobbs, your host. This week I'm joined by Jackson Brayman. What up? <laughs> Connor Hobbs. What's up? And Chris Blanchard. What's up? Oh, man. Uh, Chris, how's your week going, man? We haven't seen you in a long time. It's it has been a minute. Other than yesterday, obviously. And the week before that, we played some, played some golf. Yeah, it's hard for me to get out of the house, man. You came to my house yesterday. You saw how crazy it is. Oh, yeah, dude. I walked up in there and there was like, uh, like what? You got eight kids up in there? Seven kids? Seven. Well, yeah. Is eight there, when Malcolm's there, but yeah, he's. They they all just kind of attacked me like, uh, like fresh meat. Yeah, as soon as anybody <laughs> new comes to the house, man. Like, like a they bunch got of piranhas. 5,000 questions for you and they won't leave you alone. That's, uh-huh. that's how it is every day. <clears throat> yeah, I haven't really been doing a whole lot because Megan started her new job. So she's been working a lot of hours, pretty much just watching the kids and. Baby's been teething, so I haven't been able to put him down a whole lot. Playing games when I can. That's pretty much it, man. Pretty Got to, like, bronze and ranked on Call of Duty and then just playing playing Zelda since yesterday, so. Hell, yeah. Not too bad a week. <coughs> nice. You should give the kid uh, the stuff my my pops used to give to me, uh, chloroform. <laughs> you would give that to me when I was teething, so. Explains yeah. a lot. Yeah. What do you mean? I think I'm good. Yeah, you're good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Perfectly fine. <laughs> you been watching anything new, Chris? Um, I don't think we've really watched any show. We tried to watch 65 last night, that Adam Driver movie. I think we only got maybe like 30 minutes in before we passed out. We were super tired. Um, other than that, I started watching um, that McGregor documentary thing on Netflix. It's got like four episodes to it, an hour long. I'm like 30 minutes left, and I'll have it all done. So that was pretty good. I kind of binged it all Last night and today, this morning, like, while playing Zelda. I was thinking about watching that. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's You see some things you wouldn't normally see about, like, the fighting lifestyle and stuff. It's kind of cool. Cool. It's about McGregor, like Conor McGregor? Yeah, it kind of, like, starts off with his leg break, and then it goes back to, like, way back when, like, when he first started kind of thing, and builds up to the leg break type thing. So... I haven't got to the point at the end of the episode yet where it's talking about his leg break, but he's, uh, I saw on, <clears throat> on Google yesterday, I was reading an article about, he's got a fight coming up apparently. So I thought he was going to be done after his leg break, but yeah, he's gonna be fighting again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's pretty much it though. I haven't really watched any other shows other than that. Nice. I need to check that out. What about you, Connor? How's your week been? Um, Okay, I guess. I mean, not really that good. Um, in some ways, good. In a lot of ways, not good. I don't know. It's kind of weird just because we we had a grandfather pass away, and like the last living grandfather. So that was kind of weird having to deal with that under the circumstances. Um, so, yeah, that was definitely, definitely odd hearing about everything like two weeks after it happens. Um, so yeah, it was kind of weird that whole aspect of it, but yeah, um, aside from that, which is obviously not good, um, the rest of the week was pretty good. Uh, played a lot of Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom, like too much in a lot of ways, but in, in a lot of ways, not enough. So I don't know, hopefully you're going to be playing more this weekend. So excited about that. But yeah, just, uh, watched Renfield. Thought it was okay. I gave it like a six. It's a fun mid tier movie. Yeah, I could see a teenager really liking it. To the point where they'd be like, "Oh, this is my Dracula movie." <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, like how a lot of kids were with that uh, Abraham Lincoln vampire hunter. No, because <laughs> that was my shit. Dude. No. That was my vampire movie as a kid. Yeah. I'm saying the one with Jonathan, like Jonathan Lipnicki. The oh, the little vampire. Little vampire, yeah. That wasn't my vampire movie as a kid. <laughs> Surprises me. Not what I heard. That was the movie that started making me hate Jonathan Lipnicki. I think this movie, started, everybody started hating Jonathan Lipnicki. Yeah, yeah, probably. For that, I was like, man, Jonathan Lipnicki, awesome, and Stuart Little. Like, can't be and beat. I was like, and this kid's in Jerry Maguire too? Shit. Or, I think he was in Jerry Maguire too. I don't know. Like, Jerry Maguire part two? As no. well. 
the, the first movie. I was saying <laughs> 200. Cool. It gets killed in The Machinist, so that's something to look forward to if you don't like Jonathan Lipnicki now. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I'd, I'd say uh, if you're if you're wanting a, a fun Dracula movie that's not really necessarily about Dracula, I mean it's it's a fun little film to watch. So yeah, Renfield, check it out. Um, but the one that I would recommend people watch is uh, Dungeons and Dragons. The uh, what was it? Honor Among Thieves. Yeah, is that I it? think that's right. Yeah, yeah, I still gotta check that out. I actually had fun watching that to the point where I'm like, okay, this is one where I'd probably rewatch it. You know. We went to the the drive-in to see that and Mario, and we didn't get to stay for Dungeons and Dragons. We stayed like we were we were all like just like this the whole time, and we were passing out hardcore after like thirty minutes of that movie. So we just dipped out, <laughs> mm-hmm. had to pack all the kids up in the in the darkness and get out of there. I which I wish we like, could have stayed. Like looking over and just seeing like a whole family looking like their hair went yeah. out. Watching that's, <laughs> that's pretty much how it was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. So I was streaming on a. Like Netflix and stuff, you are not Netflix, but Redbox, you can get it like early access, but I don't want to pay 20 bucks for it. Right. <coughs> yeah. Um, you know, whatever you got to do, if you got to wait a little bit, you know, um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely worth watching. I thought it was uh fun and entertaining and, um, I thought the, the dialogue was well performed by the actors. They seem to really get comedy in a lot of ways. So, um, you know, it's all in the delivery, you know? You can have the best script, but if you have poor delivery, it's not going to be funny. So um, I thought it was, yeah, I thought it was pretty good, you know. And it's in the Dungeons and Dragons world, and you go to places, it's like, oh, I read about this in a book, and that that was fun for me. So, um, but yeah, so, yeah, check it out, Dungeons and Dragons Among Thieves, or Honor Among Thieves. Does it make you want to try to play Dungeons and Dragons in any way, or are you just going to s- stick to fantasy RPGs? I do play Dungeons and Dragons, in my own way, <laughs> not the tabletop game, but I interact with Dungeons and Dragons through books and through video games and, you know, television movies, you know, I interact in that through other ways, but as far as playing the tabletop game, I'm, I'm still not really wanting to do that. <laughs> gotcha. It's, it, you know, I want to sucker one of you guys into playing. I, play. I would like to me and Megan actually have been trying to find people that want to play it. It, yeah, but you ain't got time to play it. Sucker. I know, I know. Yeah, I'm sure it's fun, <laughs> especially in its not own now. Way. You, <coughs> you really and time consuming. Fifty kids. Yeah, it's see, it's it's worse now. She's working twelve hours a day. Ooh, <clears throat> only four days a week, but still, the three days that she's not working, three or four days she's not working, I'm working as many hours as I can. So, it still makes it pretty difficult. Yeah, the four day like work week and then three days off is pretty nice. But, uh, yeah. But yeah. I think we're going to talk about Tears of the Kingdom here in a little bit, but that's mainly what my week was about is a lot of cool stuff involving that aside from the grandpa stuff. So nice yeah. and not nice. Yeah. yeah. What, what about you guys? What about your weeks? Uh, it's pretty good. Um, I watched that movie paint with Owen Wilson. Uh huh. That was pretty good. This is it like an art house flick. Um, not really, kind of, but not really. It was kind of like a Wes Anderson kind of movie. Okay. Um, it was very weird, and the um, world aesthetic was odd. Like, the whole time me and Rachel watched the movie, we kept saying back to each other, like, what time period is this in? <laughs> like, they were driving super old cars, but certain parts, they'd have technology that you'd see in, like, the 90s. But then you'd see technology that you'd see in today's world. It was so hmm. weird, man. It didn't make sense to me. And, like, I get parts of it were in the past and stuff like that. But, like, so much of it, I was like, man, what is going on in this movie? Like, the time period was messing with my head. Um, also, Owen Wilson's um, afro. He had an afro the whole movie because he's, like, pretty much playing, like, an analog to um, Bob Ross. Mm-hmm. And... The whole time, his afro was getting, like, bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> it was like in Scary Movie yeah. 3, when that chick's hat keeps getting bigger and bigger. I kept That's pointing, at, pointing out to Rachel, I'm like, Rachel, does this, does this afro look bigger to you? And she's like, yeah. And then moments later, I'd be like, dude, it looks even bigger now. Like, <laughs> what is happening? Um, it was a very, like, weird um, 
funny slash like kind of sad surreal movie um it was really odd but i i recommend it i'd, I'd watch it again it, it's a it's a good owen wilson movie um some of his movies are pretty hit and miss you know what i'm saying yeah um but nothing's better than you mean dupree Oh, I thought you were going to say Marley and me. That's what I was going to say. I don't mean to say you, me, and Dupree. It's Marley and me. Is he in you, me, you, and Dupree? Yeah. 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 Yeah, he is in that movie. He plays but... Dupree. <laughs> 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 he does, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I was going to say Marley and me, for sure. That's his best movie. Um, not true. Um, I also watched uh, Keeping Up with Silo. Today's I haven't watched today's episode, but neither. I've seen the last three episodes, and woo, you're liking it, really digging it, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. I, it's I've got like the same grip on it that I did Severance when I started watching it. Mm-hmm. And whenever I started watching Severance, I was able to just binge watch it all. So now I actually have a Severance type show where it's like, all right, now I get to watch this as it's coming out, and I'm really digging it. Have you watched it yet, Connor? No, I need to get my Apple back. Yeah. Man, it's dope. It is dope. Yeah, I've seen a couple of different articles saying like it's so far it's the best TV show of the year and stuff like that. And I'm liking it. I'm liking it. Um, I, I, when did Last of Us end? Like yeah, February, it was, maybe. Yeah, it's pretty recent. Into February, because like I think uh, Mando started in like March, right? Yeah. Something like There's that. been some good TV shows this year so far. Yeah. Yeah, Last of Us was like pretty good, but so far I don't think it's beaten Silo. So yeah, si- Silo's like got imagine, that weird factor, that the mystery factor. You that's know? yeah, exactly. That's got that. I want to know what is going on and what's happening, and I'm willing to binge watch this till I find out. I love the actress they chose for the show too. She plays Lady Jessica in the new um, Dune movies. Um, she's in some of the Mission Impossible movies too, I believe. But she's a really great great actress. Um, I've also, like Connor said, my grandpa died. Um, pretty pretty crazy. Yeah. Dude lost his eye when he was like five or six years old riding a bull. Who lets a five-year-old ride a bull? Uh, for a person that rides bulls. A champion. Uh, yeah. I, that <laughs> yeah. makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Man. Crazy still, life. That's still pretty crazy. Yeah. As a five-year-old. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude lived a crazy life. Rest in peace, Grandpa. Um, also, me and Jack, I got bought me and Jackson tickets to go see Incubus and um, Coheed and Cambria. Yeah, dude. That was freaking dope. That's going to be fun. That's pretty awesome. You still had that credit on that uh, website or whatever. What was it? The Walmart Amphitheater? Yeah. Yeah, I lucked out because that last time Incubus came to town, they had to cancel. So I just luckily had a credit there for the next time they came around. Yeah, it was pretty dope. Like they canceled it because of like the whole like COVID thing, right? I don't know if that was the case because it was just last year. Yeah, you, I don't know. Yeah. Did uh, Good Charlotte ever come around? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think so. I think Green Day did. Green Day came around for sure. At least they kept talking about how they would do it. They'd be like, when I come around. <laughs> so... Yeah. Um, I also beat Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order or Jedi Survivor. Sorry, Jedi Survivor. Yeah, the game was really good. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, so the bosses were crazy. There's some crazy plot twists towards the end I did not see coming. Mm-hmm. That were just like, what? <laughs> this is insane. Yep. There was a, just a moment in the game where I was like, surely this is not the end of the game. Because the way Connor was talking about it, it was a 10 out of 10. And I got to a certain point where I was like, man, surely this is not the end of the game. I was like, this is not 10 out of 10 material. And then uh, I got to that part, and that's when the that's when the, the script flips. And it's like, oh, crap, here we go. Because there was <laughs> yeah. a scene in the, there's a scene in the trailers where Cal is on a speeder bike and he throws a stormtrooper into a tie fighter and the whole game i kept thinking when is this scene gonna happen because i want to see this go down and it never happened Mm -hmm. and that's when i kept thinking in my head like surely this is not the end i was like i still gotta see that freaking speeder fight speeder (laughs) bike scene and yeah (laughs) yeah it comes it, it eventually comes 
<laughs> but uh, I I don't think it's a ten. I would give it probably like a nine. But it's it's really good. I really really enjoyed it. I didn't think it was my favorite Star Wars story that I've seen so far. <clears throat> um, but I really really liked it a lot. Is it at least better than the first one? Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. The first one was really good, but it just didn't go anywhere. You know, by the end of the story, it was like uh, nothing happened because of what happened at the end of the game. It's like, okay, so you just undid everything you were trying to get. <laughs> and it makes yeah. sense why you did it, you know, why you undid everything. But it's like, okay. Really, well, the first game, everything happens on Dathomir for the most part, <clears throat> you know. Right. That's where you meet the coolest characters and you also fight a, a Sith guy. A fallen Jedi or whatever. But, yeah. You know. But uh, the the growth of Cal in that second game is pretty sweet. The 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 way he grows from the first to second game is really good. Um his relationship with that girl, what's her name? Marin. Marin, yeah. His relationship with her in that game is so cool and just so good of you know how it goes and Did they fix her eyes in the second game? <laughs> I have no idea. Like in the first game, her eyes she's, just like she's popping. bugging, yeah. She's got like these crazy like eyes popping out of the skull, almost golem like. I think you're talking about the wrong person. Oh. You're talking about his um <laughs> No, her eyes are the same. You're talking about the black lady, right? Yeah. That's what yeah. I thought you were talking about too. <laughs> no, that's not his girlfriend. <laughs> oh my bad. I thought I don't know, I got the names confused, but yeah. That's uh Seer or something like that. Yeah, Seer. Yeah. Yeah. Her character arc is pretty dope in the second one. And her character model looks a lot better. <laughs> without that afro? Yeah, without the afro and having tattoos on her face and stuff, she looks a lot better for some reason. It's weird. It's like yeah. they did something to her face and they put that afro on there. and it just, Her face looks perfect when she has the no hair and stuff. It's weird. Right, yeah. I don't know what they did to that character model. Because like you look at her, you're like, yeah, that's the same girl. But yeah, she looks completely different. It's like her eyes aren't bugging out as much. Because that was a glaring thing in the first game was her eyes were just projecting <laughs> out of her head. Yeah. So <laughs> every awesome. Every time I play that game, I'll be like, man, this... This woman's like half iguana or something. I think or, that's why, <laughs> or whatever has got like the crazy eyes. You know? I think that's why I didn't like her in the first game. But in the second game, I thought she was fine. But yeah, the, the second game, Marin. Chameleon. Is Sorry, a, that's that's the lizard I was thinking chameleon. of. It's a chameleon. Yeah, Marin's in the second game a lot more. And I really like that part of it. But yeah, I said my love for the game is like an 11, rip the knob off. But the overall game, since it has gameplay issues... It's only it can only reach like a nine maximum. I mean, if your game can't run perfectly, it can't be a perfect game. Is this still going pretty crappy? They smooth it out at all? There was like another four gig update, but I haven't played it since. What did you beat it to? Yeah, I beat it like two weeks ago. Oh, okay. Like that, yeah. Um, I really like what they did with the Jedi. Um, with the um the saber stances. That's oh yeah, really I love cool, that. Really cool yeah. system with that. Um. The combat system in this one was, was really good. I do agree with you. Towards the end of the game, the uh, double-sided lightsaber was way more beneficial than any other stance that I was doing. Um, the blaster's lightsaber technique was good. It's really, really good against like singular enemies, but like, yeah, it just doesn't compare to the double-sided. And you can just do the spinning at people move and all that cool <laughs> stuff. I love that. <laughs> it's pretty much the Emperor's move or the... No, not Emperor... Um, Yoda's move when he goes towards Count Dooku. Mm-hmm. Spins at him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I really like that game. My One of my big knocks in the game is like your best friend character in the game. His name is Bode. That's so <laughs> stupid. Yeah. Cal and Bode. <laughs> like, oh the whole time, I wanted to call him Bodhi. I wanted to call him Bodhi too, man. The whole time, like, dude, shut the fuck up, Bodhi. Like, <laughs> so many times, dude, I'd be playing and I'd be like, shut the fuck up, Bodhi. God, Bodhi, shut the fuck up. Man, oh my God. Yeah. They really should have called him Bodhi because it sounds so close to Buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Cal and Bodhi. Yeah, it's just fuck, man. Like, I hate that I'm using the F word so much right there, but fuck, Bodhi. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> and I liked Bode. I liked Bodhi as a character. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, but, yeah, I really liked the story overall. And also, the, his character model is weird. The, the way his neck looks, it's just like t almost too swollen. It's weird, man. I didn't like it. <laughs> yeah. He had a lot of stuff going on with his outfit in some yeah. ways. 
But uh, yeah, shout out to Bodie. <laughs> um, and that's that's really all my week's been besides um besides playing Zelda nonstop. Um, so Chris, I had a question for you, man. So. Oh, <laughs> me again, bro. <laughs> Jack's so many episodes we just like, huh? <laughs> You talked enough, right? <laughs> How's your week been going, Jack? Uh, it's been going pretty good. Uh, uh, Ted Lasso was great. Silo's been great. Uh, New Succession's been great. Uh, Hell yeah. <laughs> we watched Air. Yeah, we, we both watched Air before we came over here. It's on Amazon Prime. Yep. Uh, check that out because it's really freaking good. Uh, I would give it like a solid nine out of ten, and that's just be- and I'm giving that like on sports movies in general. I'll, I'll put them in their own category. I'll put it at a nine out of ten. Uh, ten out of ten example would probably be like Moneyball. That's a perfect sports movie for me. But I really like Jason Bateman's character, and I liked uh, the the scene where they're actually designing the shoe in the in the room and. Yeah. Getting the colors correct and everything. Like, that was my favorite scene of the whole movie. Yeah. They were like, like, you can't have a shoe that's like not, it's like that much color. It's got to be mostly white or they'll find them. And they're like, fuck it. We'll pay the fines. Hmm. Yeah. It was really good. I loved it. Yeah. Pretty, I liked Ben Affleck's good. character a lot too. Like, he, yeah. like, I thought I was going to hate his character. I ended up liking it a lot. Uh, what else? I've been playing the new Zelda. That's been pretty dope. Uh, haven't gotten like super far into it, but yeah, uh, that's pretty much been it for me. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so Chris, <laughs> yes, I had a question for you. Continue. I was gonna ask you, have you thought about changing your facial hair anytime soon? But you freaking did. You have different facial hair. You, yeah. you have the same facial hair every year. I can't rock it for. Well, what do you mean? Like my? No, like, like when is it gonna come in more? Or what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, that huge mustache. Yeah, yeah I, I, I can't do it for for too long. It gets to the point where it gets really long on the end. And at first, I didn't have to curl it; it would do it on its own. And then I would have to start doing it because I'd wake up in the morning and there'd be drool in or something and it would crust it to like one side. And no matter how many times I washed it, it would be stuck looping down instead of up and I couldn't get to curl up. So like when I would take bites of food, anything, it would be like in my mouth. I'd be chewing my own hair all the time. It'd be like, it's yeah, it was yeah. as the curly handlebar started turning into like a Fu Manchu, but yeah, just hanging over your exactly, lip. and it would come down into my lip and it wouldn't part, and I have to keep it trimmed. And yeah, it was just I do it for a little while and then I get tired of having to wipe my mouth after every bite I eat, it's it gets annoying, so I shaved it. Finally, bought a trimmer. Good on you, mate. Yeah, it'll come back eventually. I don't know when, but <laughs> it's one of Jackson's favorite movies, Tremor. Tremor is a good movie. <laughs> Um, do you, give me give me one of your favorite stories of us when we were running around as teenagers. I think about that kind of stuff all the time. I don't. I'd say, man, I don't know. There's a lot. Of, there's a lot of good ones. They're all not good stories, though. They're all involved like us doing stuff we shouldn't be doing. <laughs> um, <Yep. laughs> I don't know. The one I distinctly remember, like, I don't know why more than others, is the one when we. We're driving by um, his name Garth. We went by Garth's house, and I think if it, I was driving or somebody was driving, and we stopped at his house at the end of his driveway, and his parents were behind us, parked in the car, <laughs> waiting for us to get back in the car from egging and to leave his house. <laughs> I think about that one all the time. Are you sure it wasn't a paintball gun? I'm positive it was eggs because okay. you guys ran up his yard to get closer to his house to egg it. Yeah, yeah. sounds about right. <laughs> I definitely wasn't there for that. <laughs> no, no, you weren't there for any of those, man. Didn't somebody trip and fall on their own egg? That was Bo. That might have been a different time. That was a different time. And that was TJ. Oh, okay. I think it was TJ, right? Or it was it was TJ or Bo. And, it was, and then, I'm pretty sure it was Bo. And then you used TJ's shirt, wasn't it, to clean Bo off or something like that? <laughs> Bo was, had to wear TJ's McDonald's yeah, shirt. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that might have been a different egg. Eggs. I think because we, we went to his house a couple times. It wasn't just that la- that one time. There was a few eggings on Gar's house. 
It's something about the crunch, man. It's like, you know, it's like, because you feel the weight of the egg leave your hand. You know there's there's velocity <laughs> behind it. And then when you you connect, it's like, you know, that crunch happens. You know, you, you're successful, you know. We, we did a lot of egg. You guys, like, walked into my house, like, whenever I was still living across from Skateland. And I, I wasn't even expecting you guys to be at the front door at all. And I see you, you, and David. And David has egg yolk all over his hands. <laughs> I, I thought, if I remember correctly, I think you guys said you were going to set it on fire. <laughs> God, was that from like us trying to like crush eggs in our hands? Something like that? I think so. We were trying to bust an egg in one yeah. in our hand. Yeah. Someone said you couldn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> and then you found out it was pretty fucking easy to do it. So just David was just like, gah, 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 like. <laughs> Yeah, all over his arm. He's, he's like, so one's much. not enough. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Something about like, yeah, if you put like even pressure on an egg, it's really hard to crack it. But if, yeah, if you like put one point of pressure on it, you can crack it easier. But you're not supposed to do that for the challenge. You're supposed to like just, just squeeze it evenly to try to break it. But <clears throat> all right, Jack. It can be done. Uh, live on the podcast right now. Let's try it. If I get a towel upstairs and bring you an egg, <laughs> no, you put put a towel on you as a smock. You think you could bust an egg with your hand? I've already seen what happens. David came over to my house. He had egg, <laughs> egg yolk all over. <laughs> I already know what happens. How about you do it, Cal? You take the challenge. No, I know I'm too strong. <laughs> um, pop it all over. <laughs> I've got a cement grip with the right hand. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you got another story, Chris, that you think of a lot? Uh, <clears throat> not really in particular. Mainly just that one. Um, most of the stories I think of are just egging stuff. Like, we just did <laughs> so many egging things. And that and skipping school and just driving around Joplin yelling at people. Like, those are, like, the two main things that I, like, distinctly remember more than anything else. And all the days in TJ's basement just playing air hockey and the Nerf guns and stuff. A lot of skateboarding. <clears throat> yeah, skating outside. Yeah, we did a lot of stupid stuff. We sure did. <laughs> it's better to do it as a teenager than now when we're in our 30s. True that. <laughs> Most do definitely. it while you can get away with it. Yeah, it was like 16 years ago we were doing all like that. Maybe TJ, uh, TJ and Ross is probably a funny one that I think of sometimes. <laughs> when he was digging his chin in Ross's back, like when they were fighting. <laughs> TJ like got Ross from behind, just digging his chin in his back. <laughs> Coward's technique. <laughs> it's a winner's technique. Um, so we've all been playing Legend of Zelda: Tears of the Kingdom. What's your guys' early impressions of the game? I'm loving it so far. I I woke up normally when I get up in the morning because she left at like five thirty or so. Normally when she leaves, I go back to bed with the baby until like eight. I got up at like six and just stayed awake the rest of the morning. And I don't usually do that. And I immediately just got on Zelda and started playing. I probably played until like off and on, like when I wasn't doing anything, when like the baby was sleeping and like everything was preoccupied, I was playing Zelda. So there was like hours where I was just doing nothing but Zelda when I, when I could. It, was, it felt so good, right? Yeah, I'm liking it so far. Like the, just the mechanics. Uh, there was one part um, where... I forget where on the map I was. I think it was after I finally got out of that main first little section when you open the door and you actually finally get out there into the kingdom. Um, there was like a well or something I fell down into. Okay, yeah. And I was like, I, I sat there and I was like, how do I get out of this thing? There's, there's no <laughs> ladder, there's nothing. And then I forgot you have that ability that you just go through the top of the freaking thing. And I just came out like on top of the grass. I thought that was pretty sweet. I like that they added that in there. That and the... Um, the weapon stuff where you can like fuse stuff together is oh, really yeah. cool. I'm really digging that so far. Had one of those spiky balls coming down that little ramp where I don't know if you've done the, um, uh -huh. that tower that you have to activate. There's a like one of those big boss guys. I forget what their name of those characters are, but the book goblin. Yeah, yeah. There's like a big guy and a bunch of little ones, and then they push that like spiky ball down that ramp into the explosives. I didn't realize that you could like put that on your weapon. You could fuse that ball into your weapon. So yeah, I, yeah I've been doing that. <clears throat> yeah, that spike ball is really powerful early on. Yeah, 
yeah, I, I was getting messed up by those guys too. They were like two hitting me, like one smack, and I'd be like almost completely dead. And then I put that ball on there, and it was just destroying them. Mm-hmm. So I got through it after that pretty quick. But yeah, I'm I'm enjoying it a lot so far. It's really fun. I'm be playing it a lot this weekend. <laughs> Nonstop. <clears throat> nice. Is Megan? Watching you play it at all? Nah, she was gone all morning this morning. I I played maybe for, like, after you came over and left, I played for maybe 20 minutes while she was cooking dinner. And uh, I paused, I just paused and saved it and got off. Just picked it up in the morning. Just pretty much just been walking around doing shrines and do activating the towers and stuff, doing some little things in between, like exploring and stuff. Yeah, it's pretty sweet so far. So much fun. What are your early thoughts, Jack? I mean, I haven't gotten super far into it yet. Um, I've only completed one shrine. (laughs) But, I mean, I got it, like, just last night. So, I feel like I didn't get to play very much of it. I only got to play, like, maybe an hour and a half of it or so. And I was also distracted a lot because Lakers game was going on. Mm -hmm. So, I was like... Trying to watch the Lakers game, but like go back to I don't know. I'd play it in commercials and stuff like that. But I was pretty cool. I like the building aspect of it. Like it's got me excited. Like man, what can I build in this game? That's what you like, should be thinking. Like so, like it pretty much seems like the possibilities are somewhat endless as long as you got the materials. So I'm like in my head. I'm already thinking. I'm like man. I want to, like, try to build, like, I don't know, like, just a funny statue of some kind or something like that. <laughs> oh, you can do that and so much more, man. <laughs> so much more. I've seen some pretty cool, like, goblin glider type things where it's, like, just, like, two fans and, like, a stick. Like, they're just, like, in the air <laughs> gliding. I thought that was pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah, there's so many cool things about this game that I just can't wait for you guys to see. Um, I'm, like, it's hard to tell, like, maybe 25, 30 hours into it, maybe. Maybe more. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just so big. There's so much to do. There's there's just so much fun to be had in any direction you go. It's crazy. And I really recommend it to anybody that's thought about playing it to play it. Because, you know, it's, it's one of those games where... Like, I was just thinking about it earlier today. I, I was playing it just to have fun. Like, I wasn't even... Like, earlier... Like, last night during the Laker game, I was just building different cars and mechs and, like... Uh, like battle bots and stuff like that and just having fun experimenting taking them into goblin camps and just like not it doesn't even feel like i'm playing a zelda game it feels like i'm playing like halo or you know some other game where i'm driving like a warthog around and (laughs) someone's in the back blasting people you know it's just so much fun that i'm having like and it, it gives me the feeling of like when we when we would play motocross madness and just the only thing that we would do is drive in a straight line and ramp off this huge freaking uh, like cliff thing. And it's just like, you know, you, you play it just to have fun and your imagination starts going wild when you start to think like, oh, I got a new part and this new part will allow me to do other things that I didn't even think were possible in this game. You know, that's the cool thing. So uh, those Zonai parts, so amazing. And then, like, once you start getting all these parts, you're going to realize, oh, my battery doesn't last for shit, you know? So that's that's the kind of the drawback, but that'll give you the reason to, like, go down into the depths. And, like, anything you do in the depths is going to get you stuff for more batteries. So that's it's pretty cool. But overall, man, I'm loving this game. I'm loving the combat, loving the uh, the air mobility. I feel like it's it's the game that Breath of the Wild wish it could have been. You know, which that's saying a lot considering Breath of the Wild was the best Zelda game like for like the last six years. And to say that looking back at that game, it looks like the little brother compared to this game because it's just taken everything that that game had and made it like 10 times better in so many ways. Like earlier today, I had a uh, like just two fans and a control stick set up as like a hover bike, more or less, just (laughs) flying around, having a good time. (laughs) And I was just like seeing like what's going on like who's who's doing what saw this guy on a uh, just like pushing a, a card around went and talked to him for a little bit and then I went and flew around at a shrine you know it was just it was just fun flying around so and you don't even have to play the game that way a lot of other people are like 
you know, making the the stick is what they call it, you know, taking as many cut down trees as they can, making a giant stick and laying it across the land and walking across huge gaps so that you're not supposed to get across, you know. So it's <laughs> like you could do it that way if you want to do it. Or you can get like these spring things that are um, available later, like in some of the Sky Islands where, you know, you can just jump on a giant spring and launch yourself into the air. And that's how you can do some stuff, you know, like there's just so many options. Whereas in Breath of the Wild, it always felt like, oh, I've got to climb up this cliff. And if it's raining, I'm fucked, you know, Mm -hmm. so many times it felt like that in this game. It's like, no, I'm not even even thinking about climbing up the cliff. I'm thinking about flying, you know, or using my ascend ability or some other thing. So it just feels like they fixed all the problems that Breath of the Wild had. And I haven't even got to the, the temples yet. And I'm so excited for that part. Cause that's the that's the major thing that a lot of people hated were <coughs> the uh, divine beasts in the, the first game. Yeah. So those divine beasts sucked. Yeah. So I'm really excited. I'm about to do the wind temple tonight. <coughs> so we'll see how that turns out. But loving it. <laughs> that one little shrine towards the beginning. I forget what what's called where there's like two little targets on the walls you know i talking about. There's like a big left target and a big right target yeah. and there's like a wall blocking the right one. Yeah. There's two chests. You got to like fling the ball to smack the, have you done that one? Uh-uh. That one, it's pretty sweet. Uh, I didn't uh, do a whole lot of the shrines or I guess that's, that's how you got the master sword, right? was doing a bunch of shrines and getting the hearts. Yeah. yeah so I think I did. Hearts. I think I did do a bunch of shrines. I'm having a lot more fun with the shrines, I think compared to. Oh yeah. The shrines are so much better in this game. Yeah. Like a hundred times better. And it, they always teach, uh, teach you about the mechanics in a fun way. And it's never like how in the first game was where it'd be like a irritating puzzle or like a, hey, flip this ball in, in this weird way. It's always like some cool mechanic, like fuse a rocket to your shield mm-hmm. or, you know, do something cool with your ability, you know. Those little like spike things that they have laying around that like just stay in whatever you put them in are pretty sweet. Like, you know, those, those little green things. Mm-hmm. I thought those are pretty sweet. They, there's like a little chest i saw in like a little cliff in the beginning where there was just like a slab of rock and then two of those little things you had to like stick into the wall Mm -hmm. and then lay the thing on top so you could just climb and then open the chest from there i thought that was pretty sweet too yeah i call those uh crystals yeah they got a name i forget what they're called i think they're called stakes is what they are but yeah the man the possibilities in that game are endless the only thing that sucks is that some of the zone eye parts will disappear like the wing, the like glider thing, after you use it for a while, that'll disappear. The stake will disappear. So like when you're constructing like a vehicle, you got to think of, okay, if I do have destructible parts, where are they going to fall off? That kind of thing. But like I like I was making this buggy earlier today. It was like a monster truck. And it had these uh, four lasers on top, this like cannon. And it was just like mowing down these <laughs> cobbles, man. I was having so much fun just driving around. Because, like, I would drive around, my laser would kill everything, and then I'd just hop out and collect all the loot. So how, do you, <laughs> how do you steer this stuff? Because I've been having that issue. Like, you, you got to get off and readjust it, and then smack it again and go, and then get off, readjust it. Okay, so, like, a uh, major tip for you guys out there. Whenever you uh, do a tower, it'll launch you up into the air. Immediately look for the closest sky island. That's They're usually in the shape of, like, a plus sign. And you'll go over there. It'll have a gotcha machine. That's how you'll get all the new mm-hmm. parts. And once you go to one for the first time, when you look at it on your map, it'll tell you what parts it has. Usually okay. they have like three or four parts. But yeah, you'll do that at every one of them. And that's how you'll get all the different parts. And uh, you'll definitely want to do that because, like I said, each time you get new parts, new possibilities, new ways to fight. and Yeah, I stopped at one and I put like five of those energy things in there and it gave me a crap ton of those little bubble things yeah. with stuff in it you always want to put at least five in don't ever put just like one or two in. always put five in at a time those charges and uh you also want to unlock auto build and you do that by going down into the depths there's like a, a quest to go down there so make sure you do that early too because you'll want auto build for when you like when you construct a good glider you'll just want to just auto build that mm-hmm. you know? okay Nice. <clears throat> Man, the game made 10 million or had 10 million copies sold, right? In the first 3 days. Yeah, something like that. Crazy. That's, yeah, that's crazy. That's insane, <laughs> man. So much money. And on a Switch of all consoles, like, mm-hmm. man, just underpowered. Dude, Zelda, man, it it sells and the price always holds up on used copies, man. It's crazy, man. Like our friend 
friend of the show that was on here, Jeremy, he said he sold um, Skyward Sword to GameStop for store credit for like 27 bucks. Dang. And you know they're going to resell that for like 45 50 probably, you know? So. Nice. Yeah, I need to talk to Jeremy about how he feels about it. Um, playing Playing Zelda and this whole time has made me think about like what a... Zelda movie would look like. Mm-hmm. Jackson brought up a topic. Um, what you were saying? No, with, well, if that Super Mario Bros. movie that came out, uh, like what Nintendo movies could we see in the future? Uh, Zelda's definitely a possibility. Like to stay as a cartoon? But, I mean, I'd like to see a cartoon like movie, almost like the same animation style, maybe like a Studio Ghibli Legend of Zelda game movie, yeah, that'd be cool. I would definitely want it to be more anime style instead of cartoony style. If I was to watch a, uh, you know, a Zelda show, that's what I was trying to say. Got tongue tied there, but uh, what else other than Zelda from Nintendo? I'd have to say Metroid, man. That'd that's, be a good one. That's yeah. the one right there. You can make a, just a solo, just really banger movie out of that. Uh, I feel like I would rather see that more of like a live action than a cartoon, though. Oh, yeah. I like to see that live action for sure. Yeah, that would be cool. You go through her origin a little bit and then go through her getting assigned to like going out and fighting space pirates or whatever, then stumbling across the Metroid or whatever happens. Be fun. I think it would be cool to see a... Um, a Warrior Wear movie where he's getting his video game company started and stuff like that. That would be cool. Yeah, it'd be interesting. You yeah. gotta test out the games. He's getting sucked inside of him or something. Something like that. What do you think, Chris? You got any games that you have in mind? <laughs> Not that I can really think of off the top of my head. No, I'm kind of drawing a blank right now. Uh, I'd like to see F Zero get turned into like a movie or a show somehow. Probably more of a movie. It'd be a sweet movie. They yeah, do it. I mean, they could do it kind of like Speed Racer, but make it way better. F Zero Falcon Rising. Yeah. <laughs> Falcon Punch. <laughs> Falcon Kick. I'd say probably like I would be happy with just if they just did the Gears of War movie like. I've seen rumors from That's not just Nintendo. not just yeah. Obviously, it's not Nintendo, but I I don't think really have any other Nintendo that. I mean, it'd be cool if they made any of them into movies, but not anything that I have really I bet in they mind do in a, particular. I bet they could do a Donkey Kong movie and have Seth Rogen like just play Donkey Kong. Yeah. Cool. I don't know. You do like just a. Some I thought I heard that they had like plans to do some like off kind of things off of Mario. Is that true? Do you know at all? I saw Miyamoto was saying that they're going to do more franchises, mm-hmm. but I don't know if it was an offshoot of Mario. It all eventually culminates to a Super Smash Brothers movie. That'd be sweet. <laughs> I could see it happening. That would be like the Avengers Endgame or whatever. <laughs> yeah. The, like the Super Smash Brothers movie. Fucking evil hand is the <laughs> villain. You zoom out, it's just the creator of all those franchises, you know. Miyamoto or Sakurai or whoever. I don't know, maybe. One of those guys. One of those guys. Um, Connor, what was your topic you had? Uh, I don't I don't think we got time for it really, right? Let's go ahead and do it. I was just, uh, if you had to get a Star Wars tattoo, what kind of Star Wars tattoo would it be? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were talking about Star Wars earlier, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, I would I would like to get the Death Star plans, but try to make it look like architectural blueprints. I don't know. I think that would be pretty sweet. Have like a little diagram like pointing to like different pieces and then like the writing is not in English, it's in like whatever like Star Wars language. You wouldn't get like a lightsaber tattooed over your penis so every time you got hard it looked like it was lighting up. <laughs> 
And you can make the sound. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I smell your lightsaber. <laughs> um, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> Not for me. <laughs> this is right, like it's right up your alley. No, nah, I maybe tattoo my penis to make it look like Wado. There you go. <laughs> Public credits are no good here. Get something real. Get your balls tattooed as chance cubes. Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for me, I think I would just go like a basic, uh, like Jedi Order symbol with like the lightsaber and the wings or whatever. I kind of like that. But what would your Star Wars penis tattoo be? <laughs> <laughs> My penis tattoo. <laughs> I think that would be a good penis tattoo because you, you could flip it upside down, and it would you have the okay. wings going out here, then the the saber. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't think about that. You could have, yeah. you could only totally have like one ta- one like tattoo on like one side, so when it's down, it's like one thing, and then like whenever it flips up or whatever, it's another thing. Right. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> Get the rebel rebel sign down there. Get a freaking Palpatine and then Darth Sidious. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Darth Maul regular, Darth Maul cut in half. <laughs> On the head of your penis, you can get Anakin's head going like, this is pod racing. <laughs> <laughs> How would you do that? I don't know, man. Make it look like the head of your penis is the dome of the <laughs> ship, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> and then get the saying yeah. on the shaft. Oh, there you go. Man. Yeah, you can, you can do it. I yeah. can get half of that sentence on there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is... <laughs> this is pod... <laughs> uh. Ah, Chris, what's your penis tattoo of Star Wars? No ink is touching my wiener, ever. <laughs> no, this, this is purely hypothetical. We're never gonna, we're never gonna chloroform you and really do this to you on a Saturday. I would hope, I would hope not. I'd be looking for new friends at that point. <laughs> yeah, you would. Touching my wiener. <clears throat> I don't it's know. not gay. I don't know. That, we're tattooing it. That Chewbacca for her. Yeah, this is what this yeah, turned into. Ch- what Star Wars tattoo would you get on your penis? <laughs> yeah. I've this thought. Of, I've thought about like you actually about- getting a star. Not on my wiener now. <laughs> <laughs> like an actual Star Wars tattoo. I've thought about that quite a bit. Me it's and like, Megan. It's like Yoda. I don't. I was probably. I. I, I want to do something with like Siths because the Siths are my favorite more than the Jedi are. I don't know why. I just like the Siths more. Um, you still get Darth Maul's face tattooed on your face. Yeah, just. Yeah, red and black and all everything. No, I'd if I was gonna do anything, it'd probably be like a sleeve. But all the faces in the shadows. The next tattoo I'm gonna get is gonna be a sleeve, like a full sleeve. But I need the money. Obviously, that's gonna be a little while. But if I'm gonna get a sleeve, it wants. To, I want it to be like good. It wants. <laughs> <laughs> it wants it. It wants the sleeve. Oh, too much Lord of the Rings, man. Um, yeah, I just haven't. I haven't figured out exactly what idea I want the sleeve to be, but. I have debated whether or not I want it, want it to be Star Wars or not. <clears throat> so I might go down that route. We'll see. I think it'd be cool to get like a giant General Grievous tattoo just like on my back. <laughs> <laughs> just all the all the arms with all the sabers coming out, you know? Like yeah. that would be sick. That'd be that'd be a lot though. Are you saying General Kenobi? <laughs> yeah, sure. No. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I like maybe uh with all of his lightsabers out, but it, it's after he's gotten shot with that gun or shot with that laser, so his heart, his chest is on fire. That'd mm-hmm. be a sweet tattoo. That would be cool. Yeah. Does the back hurt? I feel like a oh, tattoo on your back would hurt. <clears throat> I think the back, tough, dude. back meat is good, from what I understand. I saw this guy at the movie theater one time. But towards your uh, shoulder blades, I think it's probably where it would hurt. I would yeah, think. probably. I saw this guy at the movie theater one time. He had a tattoo on his on his calf, and it was Anakin, or no, it was Luke Skywalker in Return of the Jedi. He was standing in front of that window that Palpatine is sitting in his chair, you know, mm-hmm. 
and he was holding Darth Vader's head, and he had a red lightsaber, and he was holding his head like it was a like it was his trophy. <laughs> it was such a cool tattoo, dude. I'm like, wow, that's incredible, dude. Man, so after thinking about it a little bit, I want to change my tattoo to a Padme Amidala or Senator Amidala tattoo, but she's a busty pinup. <laughs> Now you have my very busty. <laughs> <laughs> very busty pinup. Yeah, and she's got the torn clothes from episode two. I was about to say she's got the three the three cuts from the. I was thinking like yeah, ep- yeah, yeah. I was thinking episode <laughs> one with the face makeup and everything. It's just like that gown that she makes is all of a sudden slutty as fuck. And she's <laughs> Wait, when she's so, in the Queen Amidala like chest and no. huh? when she's Queen Amidala or when yeah she... Queen Amidala. Okay. Okay. Just, Getting just some a, Lady D vibes. Yeah, just just imagine a like a some busty geisha type version stuff? of that, huh? You talking about like geisha style, like when her face is white? Like yeah, kind of, okay, yeah, that's what he's talking about. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know, episode two. Of course, when I she's know cut episode up is two. When she's hot, of, right? Of course, <laughs> I know episode two. <laughs> yeah. Since like whenever I saw her fall in the sand dunes, I was like, "Yo, yeah, I'll I'll save you, Padme." <laughs> I was like, I'll do your duty. <laughs> <laughs> you guys remember that line? <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah, That's man. awesome. <clears throat> All right. Chris, Thanks. you sure you don't got any other ones for the head of your dick? <laughs> for the head? I don't know about it for the head. It doesn't have to be the head of your dick. just got to be the D. What would you... Would you go with uh? Would you go with that uh, thing that almost uh, eats Han Solo and it almost eats the Millennium Falcon and they have to fly out of it? You remember what I'm talking about? Yeah. Uh-uh. I thought you were talking about like the. I thought you were talking about the worm at first. The whatever that is that that eats. The lar- the, the, the boba. Yeah, I'm trying to think. What's that? The larlac pick. What's it Sa- called? Uh, sarlacc. Is it sarlacc? Is it sarlacc? The, 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 sarlacc pit. The, the Samsonite. <laughs> Boba Fett, Boba Fett Salak pit? Is yeah, it the Sarlacc, Sarlacc pit? pit? Is that what's called? Yeah. I'm about to call it the Lorax pit. Fucking Dr. <laughs> Seuss. <laughs> yep. All right. All right. <clears throat> you guys ready to go ahead and move into Yo Dude? Check this out. Yeah. Yo Dude. Hey, yo, what's up? Check this out. Yo Dude. Uh. Yo, dude, check this out. So, the mountains on Saturn's moons, Titan, uh, the moon Titan, are named after mountains and ranges from J.R. Tolkien books. And the plains are named after locations from the Dune universe. That's what's up. Yeah. Read that and I was like, oh, that's interesting. Never heard that before. Uh, give me a second while I'm trying to find one. I didn't have, I did not come prepared. Uh, yo, dude, check this out. Air quality alerts issued as smoke from Canada pours into the U.S. The heaviest smoke concentration should shift into the Midwest later today, affecting major metro areas, including Chicago and St. Louis. Oh, sweet. I'm going to be in Chicago or St. Louis tomorrow. That's not good. <laughs> yeah, that's a little sketchy. <clears throat> All right, well, sad day for America. Today I learned the French Bulldog is now the top purebred dog of USA, beating out the Labrador uh, Retriever that held that title for 31 years. We're just going to give something to the French like that? Dude. I like French Bulldogs. (laughs) I love me some French Bulldogs. (laughs) But... (laughs) But I'm just saying, like, America, you're going to go from freedom fries to just French bulldogs like that? <laughs> get an American dog, you call me. I'm just messing around. <laughs> I really don't give a shit. I just saw that online. I was like, yeah, I'll make fun of this. <laughs> French bulldogs are awesome. I love me some Frenchies. More of, an ang- more of an English bulldog person, but I still like French. I like dogs. Yeah. You heard it here first. Chris still likes French. <laughs> <laughs> just the French. <laughs> Chris, you got a yo, dude? I didn't, I didn't come prepared at all. I didn't know that's what we were doing. Well, the Pope may be French, but Jesus was English. <coughs> I think that's where we ended, boys. <laughs> and don't forget, 
save those turtles. If you see a turtle crossing the road, you get out of your car and you make that turtle cross that road. He's just trying to get some tail. Yeah, he's trying to make it the hump day. Right. And remember, gambling is a sin. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't think that it's worth to get turtles across the road for them to hump, look it up online. It is the funniest thing that you'll ever see, man. You ever watch turtles just The noise they stuff? make is pretty hilarious. Yeah, they're like, <laughs> like grunt. Uh, did anybody ever tell you that you look like a turtle, Jackson? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I I did get that. It made me feel sad. I don't know if it was the green shirt or that sex noise, but I just saw a turtle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There it was. Definitely a turtle. <laughs> I, I I can make turtle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Chris, thank you for being on episode eighty-seven of the podcast. No problem. Wish I could have stayed longer, but that's how it goes, man. Family. Yep. <clears throat> Well, thank you guys for crashing with friends. Have a good rest of your week. We'll see you all next week. Bye. Later. Bye. Only turtle I've seen so far. Crashing with friends. Podcast.